Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include We hear you, it's just pious codswallop. EU Commission is seeking a full ban on drift net fishing to protect dolphins, sea turtles and tuna. And Europe links 17 power markets as Spain, Portugal are set to join. And European Union starts a dialogue with Myanmar on human rights. Plus, Ernie Blabber writes in our letters section, alarmist. New viewers and followers of the unit find that the hardest thing to get your head around is that the state and the media is lying to you. Now sure, that's a provocative statement, and it's meant to be. Some might prefer the terms massaging the facts or being disingenuous, but they all transpose back to the same thing. The trick is to question more. Good journalism requires that the facts remain sacred. For so many people, the very idea that the government and the media might be lying to you is a huge challenge because it breaks down the very fabric of their reality and challenges their understanding. That which we do not understand, we tend to fear. And make no mistake, what we face looking forward is a war of narrative, an information war. It is only through knowledge of the truth and facts about the European Union, understanding that its intention as an institution is to complete the construction of a single federal superstate with a political institution of control called the European Commission, which enacts and legislates over everything, and at the same time as it's doing so, not one of its members, from commissioner to president, can be voted into or out of their position by the 500 million people that they rule over. Strong facts, but here at the unit, this is the truth that we have uncovered. Stick with us and we'll show you. I'm Rick Miss. It's Wednesday the 4th of June and this is the unit nightly news. First up, the top story from our homepage. We hear you, it's just pious codswallop. People of Britain have spoken and political life will now have to be conducted on quite different terms, right? Wrong. Here's another statement that seems to have passed for a truism over the past week, which is equally wrong. Large swathes of the population of Europe have shouted a warning to their governments and thus shaken the confidence of the whole European Union edifice. And another. National leaders in most of the major EU member states realise that they must respond to the demands of their electorates and reconsider the basic principle of ever closer union. Well, when I say that all of these statements are false, I do not mean to detract from the thunderous importance of recent electoral events. Now, this article is an absolute must read. I cannot commend it to you enough, and I'm going to return to this piece again as the outro to the show. But know this. The pressure cooker is boiling on the stove, and whilst long-term followers of the unit are part of the few that really know the agenda of the EU machine and understand its true power and nature, the core population of Britain on the ground know and feel the symptoms of this delusional experiment in cultural genocide, and all in the name of a common market. But now the people can smell the scent of the wolf, and some suspect that the claws and teeth of tyranny lie beneath the sheep's fleece covering. Announcements yesterday by the EU that the UK must curb its help-to-buy scheme and that UK debt-driven GDP is merely a facade orchestrated by Big Cheese Dave Cameroni in a futile attempt to paper over the cracks of an economic balance sheet stripped for the purposes of weakening a UK in preparation for assimilation into a European superstate. My friends, what we are looking at might sound like a pressure cooker, but in reality it is a tinderbox full of dry powder just waiting for a spark. Read the full story on our website. The links are below. EU Commission is seeking a full ban on drift net fishing to protect dolphins, sea turtles and tuna. The European Union's executive on Wednesday proposed to ban all use of drift nets in EU waters and on its vessels by year's end to better enforce the protection of dolphins, sharks, swordfish and bluefin tuna. Drift nets stretching for miles close to the surface have often been responsible for the incidental capture and killing of thousands of marine animals 
that are important to the ecosystem. They were also responsible for indiscriminate fishing that often resulted in huge bycatches with little commercial value. Often they were called the walls of death since they trapped and killed anything within nets that could measure dozens of kilometres. Fishing with drift nets destroys marine habitats, endangers marine wildlife and threatens sustainable fisheries, said EU Fisheries Commissioner Maria Damanaki. These types of nets were previously used in the hunt for endangered bluefin tuna in the Mediterranean until the EU banned such fishing in 2002. Even if laws already restrict its use, drift net fishing often continued illegally and a total ban on drift nets would make catching cheats easier. Well, of course, whilst the EU tries to shift the blame for devastation caused to European-wide fish stocks by its ridiculous and foolish common fisheries policy, on the other hand, its international envoys are busy around the globe, South Pacific and West Africa, trying to get a lock on fish stocks and fishing rights from the local native populations. Using the tried and tested old school shiny beads of EU aid and investment to rip off and exploit the local populations of those areas. Europe links 17 power markets as Spain and Portugal are set to join. Day ahead power markets are set to be linked from Portugal to Finland as the European Union seeks to integrate electricity markets by the end of this year across the 28 nation bloc. Spain and Portugal are due today to join the existing 15 country market coupling project linked through an interconnector between Spain and France. Network operators and energy exchanges have held a single auction at noon Paris time since February the 4th to determine next day power prices in the northwest of Europe. Linking markets is part of the EU's third package of legislation intended to remove national barriers to power and gas trading and reduce energy costs. Market coupling aims to smooth price differences between nations through better control of cross-border flows. Before coupling, traders selling power into another country had to buy cable capacity in advance, then make a separate trade on another exchange, exposing themselves to two sets of price risks. Now, hold on one just one. Now, hold on there just one moment, Tiger. So, what the EU is saying is it's actively engaging in legislative assistance to extend the monopoly of the energy market across the EU. Wow, well, that's interesting because Big Cheese DC and his counter-socialist Ed Miliband are apparently going to do the opposite and inject more competition into the market. <laughs> Somebody's telling porkies again. We'll be discussing this story and more energy news in tomorrow's live table talk show on our website at 3pm UK time. That's 2pm GMT. Looks like it's going to get interesting. I hope you can join us. European Union starts dialogue with Myanmar on human rights. European Union Foreign Ministers Monday approved the opening of a dialogue on human rights cooperation with Myanmar to help the country advance with respect to freedom, democracy and the rule of law. According to decisions of the 28-nation bloc, both parties shall meet regularly once a year to exchange views and evaluate results. The dialogue will cover areas such as the death penalty, non-discrimination of minorities, freedom of expression, association and religion, women's rights, protection of civilians and refugees in armed conflicts and the fight against human trafficking. In the case of the death penalty, the EU will be seeking a moratorium with a view to eventual abolition, says the text. Opening a cooperative dialogue on human rights is a first step in relations with the EU for future partnerships. Hmm. Well, there's something brewing here, folks, between the EU and India. It's always the same modus operandi. The trading news comes out. Then, let's promote democracy, freedom and rule of law. Watch this space, folks. Next stop, your tax euros on their way to the other side of the globe. We'll keep you posted. So today, in our letters section, Ernie Blaber writes, Alarmist. I think the danger is even more serious than the speakers taking part in today's video link were warning about. I was called an alarmist back in 1971 and again in 1975, but all of my dire predictions have come to pass. 
The world is being carved up by international business corporations in league with so-called political leaders, and they're joined at the hip in their goal to control and dominate the world in their image. Europe is the guinea pig for their plans for world domination. If they succeed in creating a federal European superstate, it will be their blueprint to move to other areas where they can manipulate and impose their plans. I suggest it is already happening in the USA and the rest of the Americas. But, back to the UK and the EU. I think it was Helmut Kohl who said that the biggest stumbling block to EU integration was English xenophobia. He was right. He then convinced UK's leading politicians the only way forward was to dismantle the UK, aka devolution, then engineer the fragmentation of the UK, i.e. Scotland's separation, leading to the breakup of England into regions joined administratively to other regions of Europe. If and when the Brits woke up to the threat, it would be too late. For example, HS2 could be used to transport European paramilitary police forces into the UK without the consent of Parliament. Such police, aided by our own politicised police force, armed from a huge armoury of theirs held at the army garrison of Ketterick, would soon quell any civil unrest from a population unable to defend itself due to our erroneous gun laws. The Lisbon Treaty and the unwritten policy of shoot to kill by our, I suggest, new type of police entrant brainwashed into a Nazi type of brown shirt would happily carry out any such orders. After all, that's what knighthoods and elevation to the Lords is for. The lacklustre campaign to keep Scotland within the UK is a policy agreed by Messrs Cameron, Clegg and Miliband, and I suggest it's only lip service when the UK ends... Clegg will become a commissioner in Brussels and Cameron will be rewarded with President of Europe. England could and will again be the saviour of the free world. We are beginning to wake up. Now I wonder if there are others who shared my views. I think they need to be debated. Strong words there from Ernie and he closes with the question, what do others think? Well, I challenge you, what do you think? Write in and tell us. Thanks again for your letter, Ernie. In other letters, Tim Fallon wrote in about our film Betrayed. Dear The Unit, I watched the Betrayed film you made. It's excellent work. Thank you for your efforts. Kind regards, Tim Fallon. Well, Tim, thank you for that. Positive feedback. We all really appreciate it here at The Unit. We're working on a short edit version to promote the film, and I'll have more details on that in a future show. Of course, for those that haven't yet seen exactly how the United Kingdom and its ability to govern itself has been handed over to the bureaucrats in Brussels, links to the film are below. Now, before we go, let's just return to our opening story for reflection. Janet Daly is a journalist for the Sunday Telegraph. Her latest piece is on the recent EU election in Britain. It's dynamite. The full article can be found on our website and should be required reading for everyone of voting age in this land. Now here's just a taste of her thoughts. She writes, There is no way that the European Union, well, that is to say, those who run it, can come to terms with the consequences of these elections. Here in Britain, in our own little bastion of denial, party leaders are jamming up behind one another to assure voters that they get it, that they hear you, that they understand your concerns, that they are going to address your anxieties, blah, blah, blah. But until these statements translate into something meaningful, some new policy, this is just pious codswallop. Saying, we hear you, in a soothing voice means nothing. It just buys a bit of time, which is the real objective of the game anyway. Nobody in politics actually knows how to respond to a spontaneous demonstration of public anger anymore. If there was to be an honest statement of basic principles engraved over the door of Brussels HQ, it would say, the people are dangerous, don't listen to them. It has become perceived wisdom that the reason for the massive electoral rebellion against the EU was that the people were just letting off steam because they knew that their votes in this election did not matter. And what do people do next when they realise that their votes don't matter? I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>